All right, so welcome to Athlete Evolved. We have Matt Caesar, current active player with the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, Matt has a very interesting story, and I'm going to try to let him take the reins and just tell us about his story, um, dating back to as far as he wants to go in his athletic career. Yeah, man, thanks for having me. Um, so I, I guess I can take you back all the way kind of to square one. Um, grew up in Cape May, New Jersey. Um, you know, I've always done baseball, t-ball, soccer, hockey, you know, the minor league, the little league. Um, you know, since I can remember, man, my, my parents kind of put me in everything uh, possible just to kind of um, pretty much have all the, all the skills I, I could have to, to do everything. Um, you know, uh, I was in karate first. I remember karate like it was yesterday. Uh, I feel like that kind of helped me with balance. Um, but you know, as far as when I started to kind of hone in the skills, um, I, I focused in on, uh, you know, football and baseball in high school. Uh, I mixed in winter track in the um, throughout those four years in high school, just to kind of, you know, keep sprinting and, uh, keep working on trying to get faster. Um, but yeah, I went to lower Cape May regional, uh, played football, baseball, winter track, did football and, uh, baseball four years. Um, from then I, you know, my dad kind of carted me around everywhere to, to go to showcases and, you know, pretty much do as much as possible because where I'm from is, is pretty much a small town. Um, so we drove up and up and down the East Coast hitting up, uh, you know, football camps or, you know, baseball junior showcases, I think they were called or uh, yeah, showcases. And they were, I think the, the footballs were called like combine, junior combines or whatever. Um, so we did that. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's a small town, so I really didn't have any offers. Um, a lot of people wouldn't uh, wouldn't allow the two sports. Um, you know, they really didn't know where I was going to play in football, uh, whether it was, you know, safety or wide receiver or running back. And then, um, you know, it's funny baseball. I feel like I got, uh, I had, there was more uh, professional scouts in my games than there were um, college scouts. So, so it was, it was, it was kind of a weird thing. Um, Ended up choosing Villanova. They were one of the schools, the only one that was going to offer me a scholarship and allow me to play both. Uh, so I went to, went to Villanova, played football for four years. I uh, played baseball for two. Uh, I was hurt my freshman year at a sports hernia um, from football. I just kept kind of playing through it till the end of the season. And that surgery kind of went over to baseball season. And then I played sophomore, junior season baseball. Um, I had opportunity to play in the NFL. Uh, I was all American my junior year. We won the national championship. Uh, I made a pretty good name for myself being on that team. And, you know, we had a bunch of heck of great players. Um, uh, so pretty much from there, like I said, I had an opportunity to go to the NFL and then I got drafted in 2010 to play baseball. So it was, uh, it was kind of up in the air whether I was going to do baseball or football. Um, you know, football, when you go to the league, you're right to the league, you get drafted, you go right to the league and, you know, baseball, there's, um, so many hurdles, uh, you know, at, at the time, I don't know what it is going to be like now, but, you know, there was six leagues, you know, you, you get drafted, it's Arizona, um, AZL and it's rookie ball and then short season, low A, high A, double A, triple A. So, you know, just to get to the big leagues is, is, uh, it's a pretty long time. Um, so, you know, what I told the baseball scouts is that if they could, uh, match what I would make from where I was drafted in the NFL, then I would choose baseball. And, uh, Jim Hendry flew down to Florida where I was training to go to the, the combine and they offered me what I would have gotten in the third round, um, in, in the NFL. So, you know, it, it helped that I went and, uh, and played my junior summer season. I was drafted, like I said, drafted 2010, my junior year. And I went to uh, Boise and hit 400. So that, that, uh, that helped me out a little bit. Uh, gave me some collateral for them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's other than that, man, you know, I donated bone marrow in 2010, 2000, yeah, 2010 uh, to a little girl from Ukraine. 
Uh, she's healthy yeah. now, 13 years old. So, um, I mean, you can you can touch on whatever you want to touch. I I pretty think that's kind of me in a nutshell. Yeah. So I was going to actually bring up the bone marrow thing. Um, I'm going to table it for now, but we'll get back to it. So let's talk about you in high school. You know, as a high school athlete, your multi-sport, maybe whatever try would be. Um, but did you ever lean towards, you know, one sport in particular, or how did you, I guess, define yourself as a multi-sport athlete? Because you don't want to say you're a football player. You don't want to say you're a baseball player. How would you define yourself at that moment? Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know. It was tough. I feel like I would have defi defined myself more in college as a football player. Um, but in high school, I think I was just, I was just better in baseball. You know, I was good in football, but you know, as a baseball player in high school, I, I was, I, I stood out like a sore thumb pretty much. Um, whereas in football, it was, um, you know, I was kind of just another, another cat in the litter, another kit in the litter. Um, you know, it was, everybody was good in football. I mean, as long as you're fast and can make people miss, you're, you're good. But, yeah. you know, once, once, once you start playing, uh, you know, better guys in baseball, better pitching, uh, better defending, um, you can kind of separate uh, the better players from, you know, the not so good ones. Um, so every time I would go to tournaments or, you know, um, travel ball, I was always kind of separating myself from everybody else. And, and I feel like I kind of realized that, um, you know, I had something going going for me for sure. Sure. So a couple things. One is, you know, I remember when you played football and you had a lot of skills on the football field that you actually brought into baseball. And I think that's what separated you, you on baseball. You know, that speed that you had, the way you ran. Um, you know, I, I'll, I'm serious. Like, I'll never forget one game. I think you had a walk-off bunt. I don't know if you remember that game, but I remember it and it was insane. And just the speed, the way you went about the game, that kind of mentality really helped you, I think, both ways. So what I was going to say is you were the original Wildcat at a Wildcat University, right? Mm -hmm. So you were, you were doing that, that Wildcat thing at quarterback. And I want to talk about that leadership skill that you had as a quarterback, especially in that kind of offense and how that helped you in baseball, whether it was, you know, in college baseball, but maybe, maybe more specifically the minors and the majors. Yeah, I mean, I I really was never a vocal leader. I was always to I was always trying to lead by example. Um, so I always putting the time off the field so the guys knew I was I was getting after it, and and I feel like that that made guys want to get better away from the field as well. Um, you know, as far as football, my roommate, you know, we we pretty much did everything together, man. We we did push ups, sit ups, pull ups in in the the dorm rooms you know we were doing pull-ups in stanford hall on the pipes like you know hanging from the roofs you know we we pretty much did whatever we could to to get better because we we wanted to be professional athletes um and we wanted to be great we wanted to win like that was that was just both of our mentalities and you know as far as um you know putting out on the baseball field uh i feel like sometimes it it, it it may have hurt me, uh, you know, and this isn't like saying college, so to speak, this is like, you know, pro ball, because I feel like that mentality in football, whereas where you can, you know, do things to get stronger, faster, and there's just so much repetition, you know, I feel like the more, you know, you can take as many ground balls, but if you swing until you, you know, you can't feel your hands anymore, or your body's sore, like that's not good for you. And I feel like I, I did that a lot. Like I was in the cage nonstop trying to figure out how to swing the baseball bat, you know, trying to figure out how to hit home runs or how to drive the gaps. And, you know, I'm not saying it hurt me because, you know, I, it, it put me in a, a good position to to learn my swing and and to figure things out on my own. But, you know, I feel like on the other hand, um, you know, simple's better. You know, I feel like if if I would have uh, simplified things earlier, I think I might have been better. But you know, it each is their own. Everybody learns different ways, and and uh, I feel like that was that was one of the ways I learned. And and you know what, it could have helped me. You know, putting on putting in all that time and and grinding and learning how to swing. You know, it could have helped me uh, tremendously. But yeah, you never know. Sure. So we talked about leadership, kind of like like the on the field physical skill set. What about the other stuff? Like you as a person, 
what kind of stuff did, did you learn or take from football that might have helped you in baseball or vice versa? Yeah, I mean, I, I, as a person, you know, I always – my wife always laughs at me because no matter where we go, not, not just because of who I am as a baseball player, but I feel like the most random people always come up and say hello to me. And I, you know, I always tell her, you know, I was always nice to everybody in, in school because, you know, you never know when you're going to need somebody, you know, whether it's, you know, you get a flat tire and they see you on the side of the road and you don't know how to fix a flat tire. They're going to help you out because, you know, they remember you saying hi to them in, in high school. Um, one of the things that coach Tally always kind of reminded us was, you know, it's, it's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. And I always try and take that with me. I always try and be nice to as many people as possible. And, and uh, I try and give people the benefit of the doubt, um, you know, but that's, I, I feel like off the field, you know, it's, I just try to be a good person, you know, and, and I feel like that leadership skill is being nice to others and, and kind of killing people with kindness. I feel like it, uh, and just being positive, I feel like that kind of rubs off on people and, and they kind of feed off that and, and do the same thing. For sure. So you mentioned Coach Tally. That's a great segue besides the earlier one that you gave me about bone marrow. Talk to me about that. I mean, some of us listening to this may have, might have seen the E60. I know I have. Um, but I want to hear just more about it from your point of view because it's – I think, if, if I'm wrong, tell me, but I think that everybody on the team had that opportunity to do that, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so, yeah, so Coach had – I think – it may have been his fifteenth or sixteenth years, sixteenth year that he was he was doing that, and he still does it to this day. It's called getting the game. Um, he used to go around the colleges and um, they used to hold bone marrow drives, but now everything's online. You can go to bethematch.org or giftoflife.org. You can even go to my website mattcaesar.com and and you can join the registry. And it's super simple. They send you a kit. But at the time at Villanova, we had to hold bone marrow drives you know, as well as every other school that was holding bone marrow drives. Um, it was kind of on campus and a, and a physical thing. Um, we would just try and grab as many people as possible to do cheek swabs. And, um, you know, every, every, I feel like a lot of athletes did it. Um, every football player did it. Uh, it was super simple. And, you know, at the time it was a one in 80,000 chance. I'm not really sure what it is now. Um, I know it's better because of all the people that have been testing. Um, but yeah, that was that was it. I didn't think I would ever get called and was called upon to do it. And you know, Coach Tally still does an amazing job with everything. So so let's factor in everything that we've talked about. You were a football player, quarterback, baseball player, gets drafted, and that part plays a role in your story. How does that take you as like, you know, you want to be a good person? How does that take you to this like crazy story that almost seems like a movie at this point? Yeah, um, I remember getting the call, and, you know, when I went in to tell Coach Tally, um, we were, it was right before the playoffs, and I was like, hey, you know, I got called to donate. Uh, I'm going to donate. And it was tough because, you know, I was uh, I was a pretty big part on that team, and, you know, I, I did everything. You know, I did kickoff, kick return, punt, punt return. You know, I was a pretty big piece in, in, uh, on that squad. So he knew what I was going to do uh, right away. He knew that I was going to, going to donate. And, you know, the crazy thing that happened is the little girl couldn't accept it at the time. She, I don't know if she was, if she was sick or, or what was going on. And, and we ended up winning the national championship and I was MVP of the playoffs or MVP of the game, you know? So it was like, it, it was wild, man. It was, it was pretty cool. Um, you know, it was, it's hard to put in words. Yeah. So did that ever change how you just kind of thought about yourself? Because, you know, you go from this athlete and then you're, you're thinking about essentially saving someone's life. Does that ever change just how you thought about yourself? Because I mean, you know, later on in life, you go on ESPN and people might've said, you know, you're famous, you, you've made it, all that kind of stuff. How does that affect you as a, as an athlete? Yeah. I mean, not really. I just thought I was doing the right thing. Um, you know, I, I think that if a lot of people were given that opportunity, they would do the same thing as well. Um, unfortunately it's, it's not like that. I feel like people do get called upon and they don't do it, you know, for whatever reason, they're scared of it, but you know, there's really nothing to be scared about. Um, 
you know, you're giving somebody an opportunity to, to live, you know, longer. Um, so I don't know. fine you know there's there's really nothing to to be scared about good so a couple other questions i want to tie in now your interest in art when did that start uh, i mean i've always been interested in art um you know i've been doing that since i've been a little kid uh i was always in art class uh grade school high school college uh, um, you know, my, my dad had always done it. Uh, my mom was kind of crafty. She did some stuff too, but I always kind of was by my dad's, uh, recliner watching him paint or draw or sketch or do he, you know, he carved a, t a ton of things and, uh, he made buck towels for, uh, to fish. So he, you know, he, he's, he's super creative. So I was always by his side, um, to try and figure things out on my own and, and watch and kind of imitate him. And then uh, I really started getting into it when we, we, my wife and I had our first foundation dinner and we were trying to think of something that, you know, we could do to raise money. That was something unique. So I did uh, a self portrait of me in my Villanova uniform and a self portrait of me in my Cubs uniform. And they both sold for 500 bucks. So I was like, all right, you know, that's pretty cool. And then um, that year, uh, I think we were going to the 2017. Yeah. Uh, the Cubs had reached out to me and they asked me, Hey, would you do uh, a painting of the world series? So I did the one of uh, Chris Bryant and Rizzo and ended up raising $40,000 and, and uh, it's been history ever since. Yeah. So let's go back to the childhood again, just like we did for sports. What did you find so interesting or fascinating about art? just that your dad did it or was it something that like creative juices yeah I don't know I I'd probably say you know I've I've always kind of been creative I always try to I've always just tried to you know color paint you know it's just I guess a part of me um I don't really know how to answer that but that's that's pretty much all I got for you well so let me follow up that que that question with all right have you seen anything in your creativity um, for your approach to art also coming out in the way you play baseball, maybe the way you, you know, go into a batter's box and approach a pitcher or just the way you maybe practice or anything like that? Have you seen any parallels there? I don't think so. I think I, I think about how I can use things to paint or draw or sketch more than, than using that for baseball. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. You know, no, like I'm going like, the field, I'll be like, oh, man, that's, that's like, that would be a cool picture to paint. Or, oh, man, that's a cool yeah. color to use, you know, instead of, like, me being in the box thinking about, like, uh, <laughs> hey, man, I can paint this picture right here. <laughs> but it shows that art occupies this part of your brain at all times, which is really oh, good. Yeah, it's always there, for sure. All right, so let's go a little further. Like, I was trying to make it, so it was this year approach to maybe an at-bat that it was very similar to art, but let's go into your approach to art. How does it actually happen? Because I look at what you painted specifically, like the Michael Jordan ones, I think you did a Kobe one, and I'm like, I couldn't paint that even if I, like, <laughs> just, just like, paid someone to do that. Like, I couldn't do that. So what's your approach? I mean, how long does it take you? Talk to us about that. Yeah, I mean, uh I'd say it probably takes me, you know, right around the week to get a, to get a painting out. Um, so I cut stencils, I spray the stencils and I design on my iPad first and then I cut the stencil, you know, I design on the iPad just so I know what it's going to look like. And uh, then I'll cut the stencil, then I'll paint the stencil. And, and that's, that's pretty much my process. Um, done a lot of research on how to, uh, and a lot of like, you know, scanning on Instagram and scanning, you know, past and present artists on what they do mm -hmm. and, and what they use on, 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 uh, you know, whether it's canvas spray paint, you know, regular paint, acrylics, you know, whatever. Um, done a lot of research on that just to kind of come up with my own style. I feel like, you know, obviously 
a lot of art is a lot of imitation from everybody. Um, everybody's trying to imitate everybody. They're just trying to put a little, a little twist on it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much my process. Sure. So the art, the approach that you have for art and all that kind of stuff, is this something that you see yourself doing, you know, maybe in your forties, your fifties, I know you might not be thinking that long, but this is one of those things that, you know, you saw your dad doing something you clearly have interest in doing. Yeah, dude, I'm always thinking about ways to expand. Uh, it's probably one of my downfalls. My head's always, always going. I'm always thinking about stuff to do. Um, yeah, obviously, uh, you know, I feel like it's been, it's been really cool for me to do a bunch of paintings uh, these past couple of years. And I feel like once, once I get finished playing, that's, you know, I'll, I'll probably be able to focus on that a little bit more and uh, hopefully be able to make a lot more paintings. Yeah, so a lot of what you're doing in terms of the paintings right now, I think, are very reactive, right? Kobe's passing Michael Jordan's documentary. I know you just did a Ken Griffey Jr. one. How are you getting that inspiration along? Or is it just it pops up, it's relevant? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I'm still learning. Um, a, lot of, a lot of artists do what's relevant. And, you know... I'm still learning like what is relevant, like, you know, what, what, what people are doing and, you know, what is selling, what's, what's popular. You know, I, I did um, like those Jordans for the last dance, those literally like I couldn't get them out soon enough or fast enough to, you know, because it's everybody wanted them. Yeah. Everybody wanted them. And then I do a Ken Griffey and there's like, yeah, even though it's a great painting, it's not like in right now. Um, right. You know, maybe when baseball comes back or, you know, later down the line, people are going to see it and they're going to love it and they're going to want it. Um, I just tried to to do a Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire one. So, um, yeah. it, and it came out great. It's it's sick. It's awesome. Um, yeah. and I think once that buzz comes for the 30 for 30, when it comes out June 14th, I think someone's going to swipe it up and, and uh, they're going to get it. So, I'm 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 really trying to to figure out like how to become an artist, become a better artist. There's there's people I talk to all the time. I try and pick people's brains, but you know, sometimes it's hard, man. A lot of people don't want to give up their uh their information. Yeah. Well, so that was the next thing I was going to ask you is you are immersed on social media. I mean, that's how we reconnected and I think one of the interesting things for that is you're an athlete first and foremost on social media, that's what the public perceives you as, but you have the link to your art website and you're trying to probably immerse yourself with that community as well. So how is that going? I know you, you pick their brain, you kind of get an idea of what equipment they use, but how is that going in terms of immersing yourself in that community? Yeah, I think it would, it's like 50, 50. Um, a lot of people, uh, I would say half, half will respond to me and they want to help out and half, won't respond to me and it, it is what it is you know I, I don't mind um it honestly makes me you know want to respond to people more when they message me um whether it's you know i i can tell who's just kind of messaging me just to to get a reaction but yeah. there's there's certain people that you know ask well thought out questions that i've responded to because i'm like man you know I, if I help this guy out, he's always going to remember that I'm like, you know, verified professional athlete, you know, almost 80,000 followers. And I reach out to somebody with 5,000 followers. They don't respond to me. I'm like, right. dude, like, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to like steal anything. I'm just trying to, to get insight on, on the art world. Um, so like I said, it's, it's kind of a, a learning curve for me. I, like I, I've been responding more just to, to kind of pay those dues and hopefully people will respond to me more. <laughs> well, I think that's how we got reconnected. So I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. See, you yeah. know, I responded I to you, right? Like, yeah, that's, that's exactly what happened, man. And I, and I never even thought, I, I mean, I, I do think that people don't check their DMS and the stuff I hear all the time. And then when they do, they feel terrible and they want to reconnect quickly. Um, so maybe you'll get that back for you. But um, let's, I mean, let's take all that stuff from, you know, playing youth football, youth baseball, karate, even track and field, all that kind of stuff, going through the bone marrow, the art, all those skills in your life. I mean, how would you rank those skills in terms of transferring them off the field 
anything that you can do because now you are a dad. So I want to talk about those kind of skills that you have and how it's helped you being a father. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm still in the early stages, man. He's he's uh he's doing I'm doing three sets of ten sit ups with him, and he can barely move. <laughs> um you know i just try to be the a good dad you know i don't i don't know there's no rule book rule book there's no handbook i just i try and make them laugh as much as possible and i and i feel like um you know whether it's my my background my youth you know football or baseball that that doesn't come into play um you know obviously i'd want him to be an athlete and obviously i'm gonna try and train him to to be the the best athlete he can be if he wants to do that. But if not, you know, it is what it is. Um, but right now I'm just kind of focused on making him laugh and, and, and keeping him uh, alive pretty much. Yeah. I don't, I don't think you give yourself enough credit. You have this youthful common theme that I don't know if you realize, maybe your wife realizes, but you know, when you play football and you play baseball, you're always playing a kid's game. I mean, you know, Mike Trout always says that kind of stuff. And I think you've kept that with you, but then tying bone marrow to it, you helped save someone's life as a youth. So you have that appreciation, you care. Like you were saying before, people might not actually want to do that because they might not have the same appreciation or respect for the youth. And then being an artist, you're tying all these things back to your youth. I mean, look at it, Jordan, McGuire, Sosa, Griffey there's more but like I mean that's when you were um you know a child and I think the best part about being a dad is you kind of get to relive that just from a different perspective yeah I didn't even think about that that's uh he kind of he's like looks like my twin too so it's probably gonna be weird seeing him do all this stuff <laughs> yeah but no that's, I mean that's a good perspective to have um I guess I kind of get to to live uh, uh to get that perspective and live, live life through him, through me, I guess. All right. So I just want to end this with one last, it's kind of not a question, but more of a comment that I want to see if you'll do. I want you to trash talk yourself a little bit, but now before you even do that, I don't want you to think that it's just like you as a baseball player or you as, you know, a past football player, just you as a person, how would you trash talk yourself? Because if I did it as a baseball player, people might listen to this and use it against you. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would just tell myself that I couldn't do something. Um, the Jordan mentality. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's that's just an athlete's mentality. Um, you know, if my wife challenged me to do something. She says I can't do it. I do it. I find a way. Uh, you know, we, we just set up a hoop in our basement. <laughs> a basketball hoop and and i swear we go down there you know two three times a week just to play and uh you know she'll get up playing pig pi and start trash talk and then i sink three shots in a row and i'm like listen dude don't don't be counting me out too early <laughs> but no that's you know that's I, I feel like that's the biggest thing man um you know just when people tell you you can't do something you find that motivation i you know i listen to i go up to philly a couple times a week um, to get a massage, like, you know, I was telling you about, and I was listening to Kevin Hart and, you know, Kevin Hart's not an athlete. He's just a winner. So, you know, when people tell him that he can't do something, he does it, you know? So I don't know if it's an athlete's mentality more than, uh, as much as like a, a winning mentality. Um, you know, that's, I think that's, a, that would be the best trash talk for me is I'd be like, Hey, Hey Matt, you can't do this. And then I would want to do it. You know, I'd want to prove myself wrong. And I still tell myself I don't, I can't do anything, or I can't do certain things, just so I prove myself wrong. Yeah. So a couple things. Kevin Hart has that Philly mentality too. So it's that chip on the shoulder kind of, you know, us against everyone kind of thing. But I have to know if your wife tells you that you can't change diapers. No, I'm the man of changing diapers. Because she probably told you once you couldn't do it. And then oh, no, no, no. She she makes fun of me because I, I, I pull the, the bottom out and sometimes it slides down. So there's you know when he goes to the bathroom, it's on his back. Yeah. For a while. But no, yeah. Like so, when we wake up in the morning, I'll go and change him as fast as I can. I swear it's like less than five seconds now. Right. It has to be fast. Yeah, and uh, I'll get him down to her so so uh, he can get some food. 
See, I think that's what you guys should be doing right now is doing some Olympics with your trial. <laughs> so, yeah, all right. I, I'm going to end Athlete of All. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm just going to stop it, and then we'll chat a little bit. All right. Thank you.